But you do need to understand that you are going to get problems that are probably going to be in this form. They're not going to always say, hey, this is an ellipse or hey, this is a circle. What actually, one last thing we're going to learn today actually is being able to determine when it is an ellipse or a parabola or, or a hyperbola. One thing we talked about was the parabola was when either your x or your y was squared, right? Well, here I noticed that I have an x and my y squared, right? So to even determine if this is going to be an ellipse or a parabola, I got to make it into one of those standard forms. Well, before I can even get to the standard form, I need to at least group my x's and my y's together. So, this, this is it's your yeah. x. Um, so I'll regroup them, 5y squared minus 30y, and then I'm going to bring the 39 to the other side. This one's right on the number. Well, I think it's going to help us out. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think I was doing this, and then I was like, confusing because I couldn't get to one. I have right. like 39. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see where the problem comes up because now it's still, um, I do determine that this is going to be an ellipse. All right, because I do notice that between my x and my y's, I am going to be adding. But the next thing is I need to have it in standard form. Remember, our standard form is our x minus h squared, our uh, y minus k, Chris, is going to be squared as well. So I need to get these to go from, um, to be perfect squares. So the only way we will learn how to do that is to complete the square. So I'm going to have to complete the square from the x's and complete the squares for the y's. Well, for the x term, I just take negative 8 divided by 2 and square it, which is going to give me a positive 16. So therefore, I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now remember, since I'm adding 16 on this side, I have to make sure I add 16 over here. Um, plus 16. Then I need to complete the square for the y's. But remember, to complete the square, you cannot have a coefficient other than 1 in front of your y term. So what I need to do first is factor out a positive 5. y squared, then minus 6y. Now I have this with a coefficient of 1. Now all I need to do is take negative 6, divided by 2, and square it. And that's going to equal equals um, a positive or, or a positive 9. So I add the 9 there, and here's the biggest problem where almost all students make their mistake. All right, so You're not adding 9 on the left side. You're adding a 9 times 5. So on this side, we need to make sure we add another 45. OK? Does everybody see why I added 45 and why I did not add 9? Because it's really, really important. All right, 5 times 9 is 45, so you got to make sure you add 45 on that side. Well, now, so I did this so I could have perfect square trinomials. So I can rewrite my perfect square trinomials as now this is going to be x minus 4 squared plus 5 times y minus 3 squared equals 39 equals 100. All right. And then last, lastly, to we got to to put this, we need to you know see if we have an a squared and a b squared, and we want them to equal one. So I'll just divide by hundred. So finally, I'm going to have x minus four squared over hundred. That's going to cancel out to y to y minus three squared over 20 equals 1. And now let's just go and look at this. And now we have it in our form. We have our a squared, which is 100, our b squared, which is 20. We can determine that since our a is under our x, right, we're going to have a, um, a horizontal um, axis of symmetry. All right? And that's really what we're doing. We to find the standard form. And you could say here your center is going to be a positive 4, positive 3. How can you remember, like, if it's going to be vertical or whatever? Because it keeps showing the other two parabolas, like, like, parabolas. Remember our form? Our A is always larger than our B, right? Mm -hmm. Always. Well, there's only two circles. You know, circle is going to be, it's either going to have a major y-axis, or I'm sorry, major x-axis, 
our major y axis, right? This is your x, that is your y, right? If this a is larger under the x, that's going to stretch it horizontally. If it's under your y, it's going to stretch it vertically. You can just look at the equation. Look, if the a squared is bigger than it's going to be horizontal. Because the equation is worse than a squared. Um, why don't, like, the 100, why doesn't have to be, like, 10 squared and, like, the 20 be, like, something else? Why, like, Like ten two, you know how it was like it had to be a square. <coughs> Why don't we just do square? I don't know if you shot the video, I'm gonna look at your question.